Our next speaker is uh, Mr. Henry uh, Kasifi uh, Soema Tomo. Sorry, so Soema Tono. Right? It's from K, uh, KDIM Indonesia. It's an amazing uh, you know, case. And I, I read uh, about KDIM, I think, in January this year from Shareable. I, I should mention Shareable is our media partner. Okay, and since then, we were saying, oh, we have to get uh, and to listen to the fascinating story of uh, KDM. So uh, the floor is yours, Henry. Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here today uh, in front of you guys. So I will not start with explaining what KDIM is. So I will let you guys to follow the story and then finally we'll find out what the KDIM is. All right, I will start with the uh, 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 statistic of Indonesia internet. Right, I'm from Indonesia. I saw some people as well from Indonesia in this uh, event. Uh, we have today around 140 million internet users, right? As you can see, the growth is almost exponential every year, probably about 15%, 20% growth. And uh, the penetration, we have higher in urban area rather than in a rural area. And most of the internet is accessed by the smartphones. Now, what is the problem with that, okay? Background, one, there are about 400 ISPs in Indonesia, right? To deliver internet services, ISP require infrastructures which is networks. It can be fiber, it can be satellite, it can be wireless, right? As a service providers, ISPs are discouraged from owning their own infrastructures because in our regulation, we have so-called network operators. So the ISP will have to lease from the network operators to deliver services. Now, these no network operators, which is currently around only 50 of them, are also licensed as an ISP. So as you can imagine, the ISP which do not own network operator license will have difficulties in getting the network to deliver services. There is a need for this ISP for a neutral networks, which is available anywhere and priced fairly and equally to all operators, which we don't have today, okay? Uh, Indonesia is quite a large country, right? Probably it's, uh, it's as wide as the uh, United States. Uh, although we have a lot of waters in between the islands, uh, the answer is obviously it has to be satellite uh, owned and operated by neutral network operators. Now, who is going to be the neutral and uh, the neutral network operators which can price the network fairly and everything? Background two, right? The most widely used internet user devices are smartphones. As you can see from the uh, uh, statistics, uh, which is last year, uh, most users are basically access the internet by using their smartphones. Now, there are around five dominant cellular operators who are also licensed as an ISPs, who are now enjoying this market segment exclusively. So what happened to the remaining, let's say 395 ISPs? They don't have the luxury to enjoy these market segments, right? Non-cellular ISPs are left with remaining market, which is quite small. And within this market, even those non-cellular ISPs who do not own network operator license are even in the worst conditions to, become, to be competitive because they don't have access to the infrastructures, uh, to the fairly priced infrastructures. Okay, as the smartphone is mostly widely used and user device, the solution is to make the market accessible to all ISPs is by enabling smartphone to access all ISPs, right? Services through neutral, nation, neutral nationwide Wi-Fi coverage. Again, who's going to be the neutral Wi-Fi operators? If the big telco going to be the neutral Wi-Fi operator, so it's not going to be neutral anymore because they're also providing internet, license, uh, internet services, okay? Okay, background three. Indonesia internet users do chatting and social media a lot. Banking and financial apps is in the lowest usage. As you can see on the uh, uh, on your side far right, right, 
bottom corner, the banking apps is on the lowest usage. Now, as a result, less digital economic growth are felt to the nation's interest. In conjunction with background one and background two, then Indonesia needs to be able to make available special smartphones, which is special purpose built for affordability and be able to do a pre-install for all leading local, local apps. Again, the smartphone availability has to be equal to all service providers, right? Now, critical questions. Now, the form of neutral institutions. We discussed this a lot with many stakeholders, right? The options are, first is joint ventures, second is the consortiums, and third is cooperative institutions. Now, our final choice was to go for the cooperative institutions. Why? Size of capital is not the main and the only driving or deciding factor when it comes to control of the institutions. Because everyone is a member. They have the same votes, right? Although they probably chip in more than the others, but they have the same votes. Okay, the institution will be more controlled by majority interests, majority votes. More people have more sense of belongings to whatever the, institu the institution would have and would service. As the institution carries people's interests, then the government and other related stakeholders would be more supportive because this is what the people want, not, uh, let's say, a, a private institution wants. Okay. Then we form the uh, cooperative unit. I want to focus on the three aspects of area, which is device, network, and applications. So we believe in unity and neutrality, ICT infrastructure will be available uh, equally for everyone. The milestone that we have uh, 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 planned and then we have uh, achieved on the red one, is on the red block, is we have achieved that milestones. In 2016, we formed the cooperatives, right? We call it Cooperasi Digital Indonesia Maniri, which is in Bahasa Indonesia, which is in the Indonesian language, as uh, the KDIM stands for, right? Or we call it simply as digital cooperative, or we just uh, uh, say it as a DigiCorp, right? Uh, uh, Q3 and Q4 2016, we designed our smartphone, right? Uh, with many industry synergies. 2017, we start the smartphone trial production. This is only trial productions. We only produce 5,000 units as a trial production. Now, 2018, uh, which is currently ongoing, we start satellite initiative preparations. We signed with several satellite manufacturing company already. Some of them are US based, some of them are, are Asian based, right? 2018, we will start also, uh, we have also started the national apps program preparations. 2019, we will execute the national apps program initiations. We, also we will also execute the satellite saving unit initiations. Uh, which I will explain later. And 2022, or the latest 2023, we will have the satellite in operations, hopefully. Okay. Now, uh, national apps. What, what, what do we mean by national apps? The core program is the EKYC for the internet users. Because now, the internet users, uh, we, we probably know uh, the uh, single sign-ons that uh, Google has, Facebook has, Everyone, every big uh, apps, uh, uh, global apps uh, owner has the single sign-on. We do a key EKYC in the users to boost the local banking apps because we need that local banking apps to increase, uh, usage to increase. And future detailed payment with human face as a payment enabler. No more EDC, no more QR in the future, eventually. Right? We have uh, what we call cooperative unit right? Uh, we call it BMT, right? Uh, we have about 3.6 million in 2010 uh, members with about 4,500 in BMT. Now it has grown to, it has grown to about 10 million users from 5,200 units of BMT. BMT is, is, a, is basically a cooperative unit with some uh, uh, is, uh, Islamic based uh, regulations. 
This is the B BMT. Uh, BMT, uh, Islamic Micro Finance Cooperative, right? Institution in Indonesia. Principles encouraging risk sharing, individual rights, duties, property rights, and everything, right? Basically, a cooperative unit, right? Uh, which is now growing very fast. So what do we bring to the ecosystem? It's a face recognition technology which can be used by any cooperative. Then it can be used as a key KYC. It can be used as a payment method. It can be used as a merchant acquirer with a face ID technology. That means what? That means if you require no device in the merchants, then you will be having more merchants. You will be having more transactions. You will be having more profiles, economic profiles of, of, of those merchants. Then you will be able to supply more landings. And then in, in, as a result, you have a bigger ecosystems. Okay? This is a sample of um, uh, uh, apps, uh, digital apps of one of the BMT, right? Uh, you have uh, uh, some of the wordings are in Bahasa Indonesia, um, my apology, right? Basically, you uh, register yourself just by uh, take a selfie of your face and then take a selfie or take a photo of your ID cards, right? This is uh, another example of it, right? Uh, this is the ecosystem. So you can see in the bottom, we have EDC. Uh, many of us are still using EDC as a payment. Then you have tap to pay, right? Now you have a QR. Now in the future, you have you need only your face. You don't even need your card or anything to do anything, actually, to do payment, to do wherever. Uh, this will increase the uh, financial digital loan. Uh, this is the platform that we provide. So we provide enabling platform for all cooperative units in Indonesia so that they can basically do a frog lead from very conventional uh, financial institutions, uh, cooperative-based financial institutions, to the uh, more digital uh, way of uh, being a financial institutions. What do we target? We target the bottom, the bottom market segments, where no banking will touch, right? Not even the fintech will touch. We target the street bankings, where the uh, street merchants. Uh, if you go to the street foods and everything, now you need to pay cash. But in the future, probably you need only to have your face available to pay, right? Uh, why do we do? Why do we do this? There are about 150,000 cooperative unit in uh, institution in Indonesia. 75 percent, 50 percent, or or more are doing so well. Most of these uh, most of these cooperatives are. Saving and lending cooperatives, right? Where lenders' profile are the most important, where we can get this profile from uh, doing the digital way. So by focusing on apps, banking enabler apps, this platform can be can immediately be utilized and bring positive effects to the whole ecosystems. Now let's move on to the satellite. What are we going to do with the satellites? Uh, we call it Satellite Rakyat Indonesia, with the abbreviation of Satria, which is in English uh, means a night, basically. Right? The vision 2023, one million of Indonesian people will own jointly the satellite, serving 10 million of users. Phases one, which is today, until 2020, uh, 2020 we will uh, acquire existing satellite uh, capacity within Indonesia airspace uh, to do the pre-Satria uh, pre services. And in the 2022 or 2023 onwards, sat when, satra, when the uh, satellite itself is in operation, then we'll do the uh, Satria service uh, directly. Okay? So how do we participate? How does the Indonesian participate in the program? One is a satellite owners. Anyone might become a member of KDIM or DigiCoop and participate in the Satria saving programs where one unit of saving equals to five million or three unit of saving equals to one dollar, right? So how do we do the math? Uh, there are also other, 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 other models to participate in the Satria, but we haven't yet uh, determined the exact figures, right? How do we do the math? 
satellite investment is about 900 even to uh, 1,000 million for 10 million user capacity. With saving unit of around 350, one member in average will take three units. They can take as many as they want if they want to. But let's say, let's do the average of three units. Then it is required less than one million to fill up the fund requirement. With the end user uh, service fee of around $15 per month. Um, how much do we pay now for the internet services? $15 per month, let's say. And net profit of $2 per month, then the return on investment will be less than five years while we have 15 years operations of the satellites, right? Thank you. That's a very brief, but I'll be around the venue today and tomorrow. I have my colleague as well here around the venue. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot, Harry. That was uh, perfect timing. I'm sure people will ask questions like uh, about satellite or the facial recognition part, but we will save time, see if we can save time at the end, we can do Q&A. Right. Okay, thanks a lot.